I'm Owen Vallis, Professor of Music Technology at California Institute of the Arts. So that was something that I was working with my students towards the end of the semester, and we were taking a look at some of the new blocks from Reactor, and these new blocks allow us to send control voltages out of our audio interface to control hardware synthesizers. Why this is so exciting is because electronic instruments allow us to separate the sound actuator from the sound generator. What I mean by that is when you play a guitar and you pluck the strings, the act of plucking the strings is actuating the sound. That is the thing that generates the sound. So when you pluck them, the guitar makes a sound. But in a synthesizer, I can create a whole different system over here for triggering the sounds. I don't just need a keyboard or some other physical instrument. I can have systems, I can have keyboards, I can have monomes, I can have whatever device I need. In fact, I can have somebody through a network in an entirely different space sending me information that will trigger my sound generator, the synthesizer. So why I bring this up is because today I wanna to take a look at this idea of communication. How do we get sound actuators to talk to sound generators? Reactor is a great tool for bringing all of these various ways of communicating between the actuator and the generator together in one place. We're going to be taking a look at control voltage, MIDI, and OSC. So let's start with control voltage, what it is, and why we'd want to use it to control our hardware synths. So control voltage is a signal that generally comes into your synthesizer and will do things like control the frequency of your oscillators, trigger envelopes, use as a modulation source. It's essentially a time-varying continuous signal. Or simply, it is the thing that we use to control the parameters of your synthesizer and make them make all sorts of interesting sounds. Normally, we have a hardware rack that we can mix and match all of these signals together in order to make some patch that then we use to make our sound. Using reactor blocks, we have a virtual version of that same idea. We take virtual cables and wire them all together to modulate, trigger, and control our sounds. What we want to do is bring those two worlds together. The power of reactor is that I have an unlimited number of modules. I can just continue to create LFOs and triggers until I have exactly what I want to send to control my hardware synth. The trick is how do we get the triggers and controls from inside my computer to the hardware device out here. It turns out that to do that, we need a special type of audio interface and a little bit of understanding about what CV actually is. So when I said it's a time-varying signal, well, audio is a time-varying signal. So why can't I just use any device that sends audio out to control my hardware? Well, it turns out that many of these signals are very slow or, in fact, static. So if I want to play just a continuous note, say middle C, then I just need to send a fixed value. It turns out that that's very bad for your speakers. This fixed value will make your speakers poke out at a certain spot and then kind of move around this new position. That's hard on the speakers and robs them of some of their power. So generally, audio interfaces will filter out that kind of signal. However, for controlling your hardware synthesizers, these are exactly the signals we need. To get access to them, we need what's known as DC coupled outputs. Devices like this Motu Ultralight here, or RME, or even Expert Sleepers, all allow for this DC coupled output where they permit this zero hertz or DC signal to come through. Once we have one of these devices, it's as simple as building a patch in Reactor, coming up with whatever you want to send out to control your hardware synthesizer, and then sending it out a cable. So let's start from scratch and take a look at what the new modules in reactor blocks are that we can use to do this. So I'm going to quit Ableton here. And we'll open reactor to start. The first step is let's make a new ensemble here. And let's get access to all of the outputs from the back of the Motu. So we have all eight here now. And what we want to do is, first we need to tune our oscillators. So I'm going to set up the modes so that we can do that. I'm going to open the filter all of the way, turn the resonance down, make sure I'm not doing any kind of modulation. We just want a very basic signal here. 
And if I turn on this sustain mode, we should be able to hear a signal coming in. If I just connect the input of my Moog, which is coming in on input one here in the audio interface. So I'm gonna take input port one, hook it up to the output port. So all we need to do now is turn up the volume here in the Moog and we'll hear some sound. So what we've essentially done is just hook the output of the Moog into input one on the Motu. In Reactor, I've taken that input and just sent it out to our speakers. Now what we want to do is find a way to control the pitch of the Moog from Reactor. The first step is to go to our library under utilities, under blocks here, and grab the new pitch CV module. I'm going to hook up the pitch out port 7 and the gate out port 8. And then the last piece here is I'm going to take the input from the Moog and hook it up to the import on this module. So let's talk a bit about what the output ports are here. So the pitch CV is going to send out a signal between negative 1 and 1 that I'm going to use to control the frequency of the oscillator. The gate CV will send out a pulse or a stepped signal. When it's high, the Moog should make sound. So our pitch CV is currently coming out port 7, so we'll take this wire here. And what we want to do is plug this into your 1 volt per octave. This controls the tuning of the oscillator. Now the challenge is the expert sleepers modules output something like negative 10 to positive 10, whereas this one outputs something here like plus or minus 5 volts. That difference in voltage plus the internal tuning and wiring of this whole device by itself means that when I send a fixed value from reactor, it's not entirely guaranteed that it will play the same frequency every time just when you set it up like this. What we need to do, just like with any other acoustic instrument, is we need to tune it. They've made this very simple for us. What we want to do is click this run button here and it will send a sweeping signal that will then change the frequency of the oscillator in steps, allowing reactor to figure out what signal it needs to send for each of the frequencies we want. So let's try that now. Perfect. It's as simple as that. The hardware device is now in tune with any VST instrument you would want to play. Any module that will send out a tone, you can send in this signal, run this sequence, and it will listen to the output and do its best to try and tune the octaves for you. So now that we have a way to control the pitch, the next thing we want to do is have a way to send out triggers. These triggers are going to be what fire off our envelope. So I'm going to take off this output mode here, take off sustain, so my Moog essentially now is waiting for a gate signal to trigger the envelope in order for us to hear some sound. So if I turn up the volume, we shouldn't hear anything. What I want to do next over here is grab a trigger. So this will be gates and triggers from the new modules. And we're going to take the first output here and assign that to the gate. What this module does is condition signals on the way in so that they are the correct duration, essentially, to trigger different envelopes and things like that. Now that we have this module in place, what we're going to want to do now is add a sequencer here so that we can trigger different pitches and trigger different envelopes. So let's go in and first off, I'm going to hide this ensemble so that we can just focus on our blocks modules. I'm going to go back and take a look at the bento box collection here and grab the eight step sequencer. I'll take the pitch output from my sequencer and use that into the pitch CV out. That converts this signal into something that's tuned with the Moog. And then I'm going to take the gate output and put it into the gates and triggers. So hopefully that'll then trigger this in a much shorter uh, pulse that exactly triggers the envelopes here on the Moog. What we want to do now is one last piece, which is to grab a clock. And this will drive everything. So this clock should put out a series of pulses that will move our sequencer forward. And here I'll just pick some random pitches and we'll put some slides. And we'll say it's only four steps long. And now when I press play here, this should begin to send out a gate signal 
Oh, and the last piece here is we need to take the cable, hook it up to the gate, and this should be all we need to get Reactor to begin to play the Moog. So what's amazing about this is that now we have a tuned hardware synthesizer that is being triggered by my sequencer in my computer. This clock here can be slaved to something like Ableton, so it could be in sync with your session. Your sequences can be stored with the session and recalled. But on top of that, I now have the ability to mix and merge different signals to act as modulators. So let's take a look at that next. So we're doing the very simplest here of sending out a sequence of notes, but I wanna go and grab something like an LFO. So if I go in here and say an LFO, I need a way to send this LFO out. I could just send it out another port here, like port six. But what I wanna do is use a new module called CD Mix that allows me to blend together a bunch of different signals. And what I'm gonna do is take the pitch output from the CV and feed that into port one. And I'm gonna take the output from the LFO and feed that into port two. And then I'll hook this up to port six. So what this allows me to do is I can now blend the pitch information coming out, the pitch signal, along with a separate modulator, the LFO. So I'm gonna grab this third wire here, and I'm gonna use this to modulate the cutoff. So now when I'm playing it, first I'll unplug it actually so we can hear the original sound. And I'll start playing back our sequence. And the cutoff is set sort of in the middle there. When I plug this in, we're not hearing any modulation yet because I need to turn up the volume on these different signals. So the first one is gonna be the notes I'm sending out from the keyboard. So I'll begin to bring those up and we have to turn up the master volume here. So again, without that, you can hear how the, the cutoff is gonna sound a little duller. And then with it, and it's very subtle because it's not a super loud signal. But if I begin to turn up the LFO now, and we can turn up the rate of the LFO. And what's really interesting about this is maybe this LFO signal goes too low and I don't like the depth, it, it makes it too muted. What I can do is click on this range value here and begin to set where the LFO swings around. So as you can see, there's a lot of control very quickly and this has four inputs on this one mixer alone. So you can take these four different signals and create very complex modulation sources that then come in on a single wire and allow you to control something like the cutoff. This is important, especially on something like this Mother 32, because I don't have the ability to stack several of these cables on top of each other. There is the opportunity to mix two of these signals and blend them together, but certainly there's not the level of control that is afforded through this mixer here. And again, because it's all in software, I can make as many of these as I want and I can make them as precise or as varied as I want. So now that we understand how this CV setup works a little bit, what I'd like to do is open this up in Ableton and show you how we can extend these ideas to not only control the mode, but also control MIDI. This will allow us to play both our hardware synthesizer and the VST at the same time and create some interesting combinations between analog sounds and more digital timbres.